Bless up, bless up, bless all the way up. It's your boy Change Agent Cooper coming to you live from Asheville, North Carolina. Hashtag 828 is great. Hashtag Appalachia strong. Hashtag voices of Appalachia. Workforce equity, baby. Please like this channel. Subscribe to this channel. Click the bell for notifications so you can be alerted when I'm putting this content out because I got a lot to say and I'm going to say it. I got a lot of experience, strength, and hope, and I'm going to share it. Today, I want to talk a little bit uh, to the employers. This, this video here is really for the employers, those who are looking to get into second chance hiring, those equitable hiring partners, those people that are looking to prioritize inclusion as you consider your DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts. I want you to remember something. I want you to remember something that's coming from a black man who served years in prison who's in long-term recovery from addiction, who used to sell dope, um, who's in long-term recovery, who practices a program of recovery, who's active in the faith community. I'm, I'm listing these things out because I want you to understand where I'm coming from with this, right? Providing equitable hiring is, 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 is um, it's not something that's like a cookie cutter approach. And, and what got me here was the conversation that I had had with a stakeholder. And I was talking about like, uh, um, I was talking about um, hiring justice involved and hiring people in recovery. Um, and so I was talking specifically about working with people in recovery, um, specific to substance use disorder. And and the and the conversation kind of kind of took a turn talking about justice involved. And so I just need people to understand, like you can be a second chance employer that provides second chances and provides opportunities to people with criminal backgrounds but that does that's not equivalent of being a re recovery friendly workplace that's not it's not equivalent and, and and let me like let me explain like you can be an employer who who will hire somebody with a criminal background with no uh, 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 work experience somebody who who uh, has a violent background or whatever you can you can uh, shout out to you for doing that because we need you we really need you to provide those opportunities and shout out to all the employers that's given these chances because for people to not reoffend, they need to get back into society, participate in the economic mainstream and feel a part of. So shout out to those who are doing that, right? But that does not equate recovery friendly. You can be an employer that gives these chances and you have you can have low barrier to low barrier entry to the jobs. You know, uh, it could be people that are actually struggling with substance use disorder. It can be a norm uh, um, in your workplace that, that people party hard. It can be a, uh, you know, and, and as we look at legalizing marijuana, you know what I'm saying? I feel like they should legalize it. I'm in long-term recovery myself. So, you know, I ain't gonna see, I ain't got nothing bad to say about people that smoke reef. I hope they legalize it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna smoke it. I'm in long-term recovery. I don't use any minor mood altering substances and have not since January the 16th, 2009. All glory be to God. But, you might be an employer. You have people come to work, smell a little bit like weed, and you don't reprimand them or anything like that. You know, you might be an employer that's really loose uh, on the accountability side. And I'm not going to say that employers like that don't serve a place in this world today because we have a lot of issues and the trauma-informed lens will, will, will kind of contribute to a person uh, providing a more open arms approach to things. But when I look at recovery, watch this. When I look at recovery and I look at people in recovery from substance use disorder who are needing to be in a certain type of environment to keep from returning to old behaviors that lead to utilizing illicit substances, you dig? A lot of times they need to be in an environment that is more structured. They may need to be in an environment where, you know, people aren't talking about partying and throwing down on the weekend, maybe not smoking a, a, a bowl or a blunt on your break, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might need to be in an environment that's the that's type of, you might need to be in an environment that drug tests. You might be in that, you might need to be in an environment like that. And so, you know, I, I say all of this because like, I, I want people to understand that, that being a, 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 a more justice, in, justice involved friendly, like more second chance employer friendly, you know, felony friendly, however you want to say it, um, it does not equate to being recovery friendly just doesn't um you can be an employer that that understands and i've seen both like let's be clear man i've been doing this work for a hot minute now 
You know what I'm saying? Advocating for people in recovery and advocating for people with criminal backgrounds. Like, I've been doing it. I've been doing it. It ain't new. Go on my Facebook. You'll see me going off for years and years and years. Like, for real, for real. And so, what I also have seen is employers that be more recovery friendly, but not as second chance employer friendly. Like, like let's say they, they, they might not be as... They might not trip as much on somebody who may have had a possession charge or a DUI, but then they trip on somebody that had a trafficking charge. Or they might trip on, trip on somebody that has a violent charge on their record. So they're not really a second chance employer, but they're recovery friendly because they're willing to hire someone, you know, that's in recovery or has like a, a charge like that. And a lot of times multiple larcenies or, or multiple possession charges that don't, uh, 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 that, that doesn't have like the sales attached to it a lot of times it'd be people who was using you did and so an employer can be willing to hire them but not be willing to hire somebody that has some more quote unquote this is taboo lingo just to be straight up more than somebody who has you know more serious crimes you know you know they they may be more more uh uh, uh open to hire somebody that had a drug problem than they will be to somebody who had a, a shooting charge or robbery charge and we need to understand there's a difference but we also and also on this video while i'm talking about these different charges i want you to understand that people change people do change people do change and some for some people one moment in their life impacted them for the rest of their life you know what i'm saying or maybe they was with somebody they ain't had no business being with and i've seen it go both ways now this one young lady she was with somebody ended up having having to wear all these charges because she was with her boyfriend and she didn't tell on nobody so they end up making her wear the charges too you know i've seen it a lot of different ways and so just understanding that you know second chance hiring is important and having a recovery friendly workplace is important and as we look at the U.S. labor shortage, the, the labor shortage, the North Carolina labor shortage, as we look at the labor shortage and we look at a lot of these employers who are more willing to hire folks that they haven't never hired before, you dig? We got to understand that we got to we gotta also support these employers and help these employers and, and educate them about best practices, educate them about asset mapping, educate them about the tools that are available in the community that will empower them, whether it's the DEI training, whether it's a recovery coach training, whether it's a mental health first aid training, whether it's a this recovery action plan training there's a lot of resources that we can resource the employers up with especially their leadership especially their leadership you can do professional developments on recovery and substance use disorder you can normalize talking about it you can put up the the Christ, crisis lifeline number up in your break room you can you can uh, uh, uh like advertise recovery events it's so many ways you can go about this to normalize healing talk about it you know what I'm saying? Like call the meeting with your staff and just say, hey, we know substance use disorder is hitting our, our state, it's hitting our region, it's hitting our county, our city, whatever it is that you want to talk about. It's hitting us heavy. And we want our employees to know if you need help, you can come to HR. We can get you in treatment. You got insurance. Like normalize talking about that thing. Normalize talking about it so people understand when it's showtime, they can go and get help. And I, I got some manufacturers that I've sent people to work at over the years with my work that I've done with recovery careers. And I remember this one brother, but I done had a couple of them that had jobs, that had jobs long enough to where they had insurance and having that insurance provided an opportunity for them to get into some good treatment because they had insurance and they didn't have to not go without being paid. You feel me? And, and so this resource was made available because I had a healthy relationship with the HR department of that advanced manufacturing company to let them know when they reached out to me and they say, hey, something's going on here. He's missed a couple of days. He's not acting the same. I was able to talk to him and I was able to say, look, bro, these people really care about you, bro. You feel me? Like, let's let's get you some help. They trying to help you, dog. The next thing you know, he was in treatment. That's how it works. But being recovery friendly, like I say, being recovery friendly and being a second chance employer are not equivalent. They are not equivalent. But I'm grateful for, for whether you want to be a second chance employer or a recovery friendly employer. I'm grateful either way. But I need you to understand that they're not equivalent. They are not equivalent. Be both. I guess the <laughs> that's what the this that's what that's the gold standard. The gold standard is to be both. But I ain't tripping. Like, be either one of them, if you ask me. Just make sure you do your due diligence before you put a person in harm's way. And knowing the difference between recovery friendly and, and knowing the difference between, you know, being a second chance employer. Knowing the differences, comparing and contrasting is you've done your homework. 
to keep people from keep from putting people in in harm's way. You know what I'm saying? And I'll give you one more example, you know, before I roll out. Like I seen a significant amount of people that get out of prison uh 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 that have like the construction skill set or the, or they good in the in the um in the kitchen, food service. Some of the amazing skill sets. But I need people to understand I need people to understand that when you look at the construction industry, when you look at the construction industry or when you look at the food service industry, a lot of times, a lot of times, unless you get the right employer, a lot of times they'll have, you know, a lot of, you know, substance misuse going on. I've seen it a lot. People know it. It's, it's enough to the point to where they have like a special meeting called Ben's Friends um, for people who work in the, in the um, food service space. So you got to know these things as an employer. You got to be familiar with these things. And if you're not familiar, it's OK. You got to make sure you partner with organizations that are familiar with them. That's what you call doing your due diligence, partnering with purpose, knowing your community, knowing your community and knowing the resources. People like me, not just here to complain. We're here to raise awareness. We're here to raise awareness. We're here to educate. We're here to empower. We're here to undergird the work. We're here to end stigma. We're here to uh, uh, recruit other allies. And, and the next thing you know, we got an army of stigma slayers changing the world one person at a time and getting them jobs. <laughs> My name is Shane J. Cooper. I'm not the answer, but I'm for damn sure the alternative. Bless up.